Soft, sticky tyres give you plenty of grip and predictable handling, so what is not to like? Well, they might wear out faster and they're going to give you more rolling resistance. So in this video, I try out a normal tyre versus a sticky tyre on the trail to see exactly what the difference is. video I am using some Vittoria Mazza tyres, it's my favourite tread that they have, kind of an enduro tyre but it's a really good all-rounder and they come in three different builds, so you have the Trail, the Enduro and the Enduro Race. The Trail build is their lighter uh, carcass, so we'll leave that one alone because actually the Enduro and the Race are basically the same tyre, the way they're built, except the Race has this super soft compound. So the difference in rubber and these two tyres is actually quite noticeable if you dig your sort of thumbnail into these. The, the race tyre definitely feels softer. But even the normal Enduro tyre, this has graphene infused 4C rubber compound. So 4C means it's got four different rubber compounds over the tyre. So harder rolling and faster in the middle whilst it has a softer, more pliable rubber compound on the side for extra grip. A lot of tyre manufacturers are running different compounds, either three or four in their tyres, to give a good mix of stability and durability, often with soft rubber on top of harder foundations to stop those rubber knobs folding over. It's important with tyres to run the suitable level of protection uh, to where you ride, and normally I run the Mazza Trail, so it's a lighter weight tyre, but plenty of enough protection for where I ride, but both the Enduro and the Race are the tougher construction, so they're dual ply tyres with multi-layered nylon inside the carcass, make it a bit tougher. Um, but as well as the sort of construction and the size of it, so the width and the volume, probably actually more important than that to how much grip you get is the compound of the rubber, so how hard that rubber is. And you can measure that with a durometer. A durometer or shore durometer is a standardised way to measure the hardness of materials like rubber or plastic. It ranges from 0 to 100 and basically the higher the number, the harder the thing is. Now, Victoria don't officially communicate their shore durometer numbers, but with the Enduro 4C tyre, I'll stick this on the side, and that comes at uh, 45. So I'm expecting the race tyre to be lower than that. So the race tyre definitely is, it looks like it's just under 40, maybe 39. The softer rubber will deform and literally stick to the trail, but does wear out faster. So actually, Pretoria use the Wonder material graphene plus silica within their rubber mix to try and get the best of both worlds. So softer rubber is more suited to gravity riders that are looking for the most grip, whilst harder compounds, uh, faster rollings are more suited to cross country and epic riding. There is an argument for mixing up your tyres and running maybe a softer compound tyre up front for the extra grip, and then a harder compound on the rear so it's, you get the benefit of that faster rolling tyre, particularly if you're doing lots of sat down pedalling miles where more of your weight's going to be over the rear. However, for simplicity, in this video, for these tests, I'm going to run the two same tyres front and rear. I've got some normal enduro and the race tyres, and I'm going to see what the difference is out on the trail. It's a beautiful British winter's day. It is dry, hooray, but it is freezing cold, literally. It's minus five today, which I would have thought would change the tyre compounds, but actually, I've put the durometer onto them and it gives me the same reading as they did in the workshop. That's quite interesting. I'm riding my Orbea Ockham LT, so it's a full 29er trail bike, 160mm fork, Fox 36, 150mm rear travel, running this Fox Float X Shock. It's got a lockout, should I want to use that? Uh, full XT group set on this, and I've got the Reynolds Bat Label Trail Pro Wheels, so my tyres are hooked up onto them. I'm going to run the same pressures in this. Um, it feels like a really kind of fun, zippy trail bike, so I think it's a good bike to try out two different sets of tyres, which can really transform this bike. <laughs> Right, into the first test to warm me up, which is a fire road climb. So I'm not gonna go full beans. I've actually got Hartley Monta, got my Garmin Rally Power Pedals. I'm gonna try and sit at a relative effort on both sets of tires and see what difference that makes to the time to the top. Okay, first I am on the normal enduro tires. Let's go. Tyres 
tires deform as they're weighted and then rebound, but lose energy in the process. That non-asymmetric cycle is known as hysteresis. So we're looking for a low hysteresis tire for the less deformation of the sidewalls, tread and casing. In this case, the only difference is the tread. But here, the harder rubber is going to flex less as we roll over the ground and dissipate less energy away from our forward motion. Right, next part of this challenge is a smooth flow trail descent. So it's blue, at the top it's all fast, a um, bit pedally, so that's all that can be about roll resistance again. But then actually kind of the bottom third, there's some fast, loose, hard pack turns where cornering grip will make a pretty big difference, I thought. So again, still on the enduro uh, tires, time to go down the hill. Final comparison is on a rough technical descent, so Forest in UK, so they're not huge, the downhill runs here. It's a double black extreme. I think that's a bit generous, it's not that gnarly. Um, but yeah, this is more a test of grip. There's not much hard braking, again, because it's short, it's more about corner in here, but this is where you expect the softer rubber to shine. It's quite short, so there's not gonna be a massive difference between the two. But this is where I'm thinking I'm going to feel more confident, at least, on the softer tyres, but we shall find out. Right, so onto the race tyres. As you can tell by the red hot patches on the side of the tyres, that's how Victoria uh, let you know these are special tyres. So now I'm just going to repeat all the same things I did before. Start with the climb. I'm going to ride to the same effort. So I've got my average heart rate and average power on my Garmin 840 Solar, which is drinking in the lovely sunshine today. So that's going to kind of hopefully stay the same effort and then we'll see the difference in time. Then for two downhills, I'll just go as fast as I can. All right to the top. Same effort pretty much, heart rate's a little bit higher than probably because of late in the day. A bit more fatigue, but yeah, a bit slower. We'll dig into it later on. Right, uh, flow trail descent. Uh, I think it's gonna be slower and more physical, particularly at the top. Can I make a bit of time on those bottom turns? I don't know.
Okay, final run. Time to make the soft rubber work for me in the corners. Go as fast as I can. Alright, so that was a good fun day on the trails. Tiring, lots of tests were done. Uh, let's dig into the results, starting with that climb. So it was 1.3 kilometers long, 120 meters of elevation. So not huge, but I guess your average climb in the UK, or at least where we are. Uh, right, on the harder tires, the Enduro 40 tires, I did it in nine minutes, 23. Average power of 259 watts, um, average heart rate of 156. So then on to the softer tyre, the race size, 10 minutes 10. So a good chunk slower. Average power was marginally lower, so 255, but average heart rate was slightly higher, 163. So for almost exactly the same effort, I was three quarters of a minute slower on the soft tyres. More than I thought I would be, actually. Obviously, you can, you can feel the difference in the tyres, but I kind of would have thought it would have been closer than that. On to the blue flow descent. Similar kind of vibes, you know, there's a lot of pedaling in there, a lot of kind of rolling resistance test, I suppose. So it's 1.8 kilometers long with 100 meters of descending. On the enduro tires, I did it in three minutes 48. Race tires, four minutes three. So a bit closer, what's that, kind of 15 seconds? Um, obviously you are getting more grip, but I think the rolling resistance made the biggest difference on that trail. But to the technical downhill, so this is short, definitely for a downhill track, it's you know a minute and a half, so it's only 0.6 kilometers long and it's straight top to bottom. So it is all about technical skills and definitely how much grip you've got on the track. So enduro tires, one minute 28, average speed of 25.6 uh, kilometers an hour. Race tires, 122, average speed of 26.7. So that's a decent chunk, six seconds on that short downhill. I wouldn't say it felt a huge amount different. I guess you probably would feel it on a bigger track, more cornering, more braking hard. There's not that much braking on this one at all. Because as much as you do want the soft tire for getting the most amount of grip in the turns, I definitely think for, for slowing down fast, it makes a big difference as well. In conclusion, the race tire is gonna give you the most grip. Uh, that is evident. So if you want the fastest time down the hill, and you want the most grip, you want the most predictable handling from your bike, race tires, brilliant, soft compound. But there is a pretty sizable payoff in that rolling resistance. So if you want to get to the top of the hill, or actually you want to be quicker on those flowy descents, then the race tire or the really soft compound tires probably aren't the best tire for you. Uh, it's just, you know, horses for courses. For me, it's exactly what it says on the tin. I'll run those race tires if I do want to race in Giro or downhill and I need the best time coming down the hill. The rest of the time, I will stick to my enduro tires or even the trail tires to get the kind of, that really good mix of durability and enough grip, but actually, you know, taking the benefits of that kind of faster rolling resistance for most of the riding and paying off with slightly less grip. So let me know if you do like the really soft compound tires and what benefits you get from those. Or if we talked about it before, maybe it's worth running the soft tire up front and the harder tire in the rear. I think that might be a, a nice little test for me to do next time. Thumbs up if you like messing around with your tires.